Hello and welcome to the Crafty Princess Diaries podcast. My name is Tammy Powley, your Crafty Princess, and today is uh, February 2nd, 2015. This is episode 14 entitled Winners Announced and Epic Frogging. Um, I'm announcing the winners today of my January 2015 giveaway. Obviously, it's February, so <laughs> the giveaway ended the other day. And I've already contacted four winners that we had. We had 101 people in the Ravelry group, so I pulled two prizes from there, and 129 people have subscribed to my YouTube channel, and so I pulled two prizes from there. And um, I know some podcasters like to, you know, put all this at the end of the podcast so that it encourages you to, you know, watch the whole thing, and I really hope you do watch my whole whole show today, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it at the beginning, and I've even contacted these people already. Um, two of the four people I've contacted have actually replied back to me already so hopefully the other two will do that soon as well so I can you know get all the packages together and uh, send them out at the same time so in my Ravelry group just so you know uh, the winners were Susan um, she goes by S-U-Z-Y-I-N-L-V and Kim who goes by Daria's mom in the, as their Ravelry handles and then YouTube um, the winners were Wendy Van Crean she's already contacted me and she is a crocheter and um, Yaneth Garcia Medina, I haven't heard from her yet, so hopefully she will be contacting me soon and so I can uh, pull prizes for everybody. And let's see, and if you're still interested in, in winning a prize, it is possible to do that um, at the end of February if you join our Revisit and Visit Craft Along that's going on throughout February. You have to be part of the Ravelry group to do that. You do not have to finish anything, so don't tell me, I don't have time, I couldn't possibly do a craft along because I don't have time to make anything. All you have to do is participate. So if you pick up a craft that you haven't done in a while or try something new and do it for five minutes and take a picture and tell us about it and post it in there, um, the, all the instructions that are you need are you know, in there. I've got it as a sticky thread in the Ravelry group then you're, you're going to be part of it and you'll, you'll be part of the drawing for a $5 giftable pattern um, through Ravelry, of course. Um, so yeah, just don't forget, you can still go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and also get on TammyPally.com and pick up all of the links and everything for, through the show notes that I post when I post this um, online. Um, and by the way, I'm wearing a shawl that I made quite a while today. Um, today. I'm wearing it today, but I made it quite a while ago. It's really dark here. I've been playing and playing with the lighting, but it's a it's a dreary kind of day outside. It's kind of weird. Um, it's trying to rain. But anyway, this is a shawl. It's like a ripple pattern crochet shawl. It's in my, um, if you're friends with me on Ravelry, you, you can go check out my uh, projects and it's in there, but it's, um, it's not really cold out, but you know, kind of covering up the cheesy t-shirt that I'm wearing today with my <laughs> with my shawl, which I really like. It's handy. I, I like having shawls in the house because even though, you know, it's, I don't really live in a cold climate, you know, the house gets a little cold sometimes with the air conditioning, and I don't necessarily want to wear a sweater and a shawl you can just kind of throw on and off really quickly. So, all right, so today let's get right into the tip, and the tip has to do with crafting as far as paper crafting. If you're looking for uh, possibly um, a quick way to make a greeting card and or a way to um, do a fundraiser this time of year is perfect for that because we have Valentine's Day coming up and I don't have a Valentine's Day card to show you but I do have a card to give you an idea of how super easy it is to make cute greeting cards this is a little sticker okay that you can pick up at the you know any craft store so between stickers and rubber stamps you can really make some very easy cards and my college craft club does this right now we do it on an ongoing basis but the first time we did it was for Valentine's Day and what we did is we um, I got some blank cards you know you can get them at Michaels or you know any craft store of course make sure you get that 50% off coupon or 40% off coupon when you buy them um, a lot of times they have these on sale too but you can get like a set of 50, 25, 100 blank cards and envelopes Okay, 
and then um, decorate them and sell them. And we sell these for $2 a piece, actually together. So that's, you know, well, $2 for the card and also the, you know, the envelope, which we decorate as well. Or if people buy uh, three cards, it's for $5. So my little, that's my little tip. It's a really good way to do a fundraiser. Valentine's Day, who doesn't buy a card on Valentine's Day for their sweetie or their mom or, you know, their baby child or whatever, you know, I mean, if there's, you probably have at least one person in your life that you buy a Valentine's Day card for, right? Um, so if you're looking for, you know, a club, say you have through school or church or whatever, and you're looking for a fundraiser, making cards is a great way to do that. And it's very simple. You don't have to be super artistic or talented to do it when you have stickers. And then of course, a rubber stamp. And I will say, make sure that you get some rubber stamps that have um, words on them. Like this has congratulations. Obviously it's a baby for a baby card. Um, because it's funny with, with my group, I have to constantly remind um, members to write something inside the card. Cause they'll, they'll spend like an hour decorating a card and then it's blank inside. And it's like the whole point that somebody's doing, you know, you're helping somebody out here by writing something in there. So I make sure that we have, we have probably about a dozen or so stamps that have, you know, word on words on them, like I love you or um, have a wonderful day or happy birthday or Merry Christmas, whatever it's going to be. And that way, you know, just make sure that you stamp that the text inside the card because the people who are buying your cards want that text. They, I, that was something that um, people who were saw the blank cards, they were all like, what? There's nothing in here. I need, I, now I have to come up with something to say. So that's my tip. Easy cards, great fundraiser project. Alrighty. So on to finished projects and let me flip over here. I got my fabulously written show notes. I made some more baby hats because I couldn't control myself. And if you saw my last episode at the end, I had a little slideshow that actually turned out pretty cute. And there's a picture of my little grandniece, um, Crystal Jewel. Yeah, Crystal Jewel. I want to say Jewel Crystal, but Crystal Jewel. And she was wearing one of the hats uh, that I made that had the little flower on it. And I was like, oh my God, when I saw that, I was like, of course, I have to make more hats for her. So here's another hat. These hats, again, are from, if you haven't seen my other episodes um, before, I uh, took the Hats for Ways class from Craftsy.com. I haven't gotten through all of it, but I made it through the first, I guess, Hats three ways. I've got one more way. I have to learn how to do a hat. And this pattern is from there. This is the Wheeler hat, I believe. Yeah, it's yeah one, two, three, four. The Wheeler hat has like four, you know, you use four double pointed or whatever. It's got four, you know, sections, pie sections. And the other hat I made, here you go is the sweet pea hat. It has three sections and I made a little pom pom, which is super cute. I found a, and I'll hopefully I'll try to remember this. I found a really nice video on YouTube where she made a, a, a tiny pom pom like this using a, a fork where you wrap the yarn around the fork. And that's what I used to do to make this pom pom. And it turned out pretty cute. So yes, yeah, so I have the little sweet pea hat and this. And of course I just made a little crochet flower this is knitted and I attached a crochet flower over here. And this is, I, I kind of hid the, the point where you, you, um, she has you in the pattern, she has you move from knit to purl briefly. And um, the ha the little flower kind of hides that little bump, even though she does tell you how to do it so you don't have the little jagged thing, but um, it still never quite looks right to me. So I went ahead and it's cute with the flower because she puts it, she actually had it like on the center of her head. It looked so cute in the picture. And then that gave me the idea to make a headband where I really just kind of used the same uh, idea of the hat. This is all, in fact, yeah, I didn't do any purling here. This is just all knit. Um, and then I put a little flower here so she could wear it on the side or whatever. And because it's, you know, knit, I will say up the tops, it's not as stretchy as I'd hoped, but the bottom's pretty stretchy. I think it's stretchy enough. She's still pretty tiny. She's only about a month old. So I got to get these out in the mail ASAP with the sweater that I showed the last time. Um, so that's, yeah, those are some of my whips or not my whips. I'm not there yet, Tammy. Calm down. Um, I'm trying to hurry because my husband's going to be home soon. And I know my dog's going to go outside before it rains. So if we can catch it before it rains. So anyway, finished objects. 
Um, another finished object I have, which I had actually put on hold for a little while, but I pulled it out, um, I don't know, like sometime in the last week, and I just needed something mindless to watch in front of the TV, and this was perfect. I pulled my fan shawl out again. This is, I don't know if you can see the fan stitch, this is crocheted, okay? So um, it's just a very simple, and in fact it's from the book um, Simply Crochet. Let me look at my notes here. Did I put in my notes? Uh, yes, Totally Simple Crochet. That's the book. And in the book they have like three or so different types of sh uh, shawl patterns that are very similar to this. Um, very easy. I used a size um, H hook. The yarn is um, Isle of Sky, which is, um, I think it's like 20% nylon, 80% merino but you can see, I, I think you can kind of see a pretty good yeah you can see the color pretty well it's it's obviously a royal blue but it's kind of got little little bits of purplish in it it's quite dark but I like it I think it's gonna be you know it's a good color for me and um, I'm just at this point everything's woven in I did not block it but I'm not sure if I want to block it and make it like a really big shawl like this shawl that I'm wearing or if I want to keep it kind of squishy and use it more like a, um, you know, like a scarf, really, okay? Because I do have another one that's similar. That's why I made this one actually, that I use more scarfish, and um, I really like it. So I may, I may not block this. I don't, I don't know. That's I'm trying to think about that. Block it or just keep it squishy. Not sure. All right. So one other thing I finished been busy girl was an amigurumi this is do to do, do do m richard the whale this is a fresh stitches pattern it's a free pattern um, i've had the link up in my show notes for quite a while um, and he's okay i'm not maybe it's because the eyes are kind of eh, i don't know i didn't put because this is, is something that's going to be sold through my club and i'm not sure who's going to get it it could be a, a little baby or it could be an adult for all i know i don't like to use um, you know, glass eyes or plastic eyes, even though they're safety eyes. Um, I'm not sure how safe safety eyes are. I don't know. If you had a little, little baby, if you had a one-year-old baby and you gave this to them and they had, you know, and they were safety eyes, I don't know. I'm still chicken about that. So, anywho, he's cute though. I like his little flippers and he's very squishy. So, um, this is made out of Knit Picks, um, the Bravo, Brava, um, Worsted, the Worsted Brava, and I think the, I want to say the colorway was Cornflower, so super cute, another amigurumi down, and let's see, yeah, so those are, those are all, yeah, so I did two hats, a headband, a whale, and a shawl, that's pretty decent, <laughs> that's a decent amount there, okay, so the other thing I've been working on is um, my scrap cat, I'm calling him, and this is a new project I started because I wanted I need to make some more amigurumi items um, in fact you can just put this under future projects because uh, my craft club is going to be doing some um, a, a sell a what we call a fall boutique where we sell items and then donate the money to charity our charity this time is going to be Miss Inc um, and so my cats are kind of going crazy over there um, and so we need some more uh, amigurumi items. They, they usually sell pretty well. Uh, the last couple of boutiques we've done, the bigger amigurumi pieces have sold well, so I want to make a few more. So I have the whale. Um, I have a flamingo. If you've watched a few episodes ago, I had to, I made the flamingo. I have a bunny, which I've also shown on here. And then I have uh, one of my members who has actually learned how to crochet with us and, and really taken off with it. She's going to make at least one possibly two giraffes but um yeah I, I feel like maybe i want to try to make sure i make at least one or two more uh amigurumi for that before it gets here and i think i think we're doing it in march i want to say and you know it's already february so i got to get cranking on it um so anyway the scrap cat let me show you is um originally i got this idea from a web blog called little wooly um, W-O-O-L-I-E, and I, again, I'll link it, and it's super cute. In fact, I've already, if you've been on my blog at all recently, if you go over there, I've already talked about it and show, kind of shown this. Um, 
but it's a super adorable little uh, cat that she's made of stuff, you know, amigurumi style cat. Um, and she, what she did with hers is she made a little granny square, the first one. She made a granny square and then kind of worked around it. Well, excuse me. Oh, my nose is itchy, itchy. Ugh. Okay, so she worked around it, around the granny square, made the little ears and everything. And it's super adorable, but even in her description, she explains that this is pattern is not really a pattern. She's not really written a pattern out before, so she kind of just tried to document how she wings it, I guess you could say. Um, and I am not following it that well, personally. So this is what I started with. All right, I have two of these that I've made. All right, they're almost the same size. She doesn't even tell you what size square it is. Like she has this, she she makes a different square. She she actually says, you know, hey, the problem with the granny square is obviously it's got holes in it, and so the any of the stuffing's going to come out. So her second attempt was a square that wasn't um, a granny style square, but it was, you know, the 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 stitching was tighter, but it still had holes in it. So I thought, okay, I, I like that idea, but I'm going to make a square and I'm going to just use single crochet. Okay, so that. There are no holes, no stuffing's going to come out. But like I said, she doesn't really even tell you the size of the square, which I guesstimated after looking through her stuff that it's probably about six inches. Um, and then, so I, anyway, so I have this. Well, I kind of went back and forth. I almost thought of taking the frog in these because I, I started getting to the point like I'm almost feeling like I'm making this up myself now because I just had so much trouble following her instructions. And again, I'm not dissing her. She actually says in there, these are, this is not a pattern, okay? So it was my mistake to think I could follow her instructions, you know, and understand what she was doing. Um, so I went on the other day and I thought, okay, I'm gonna look at this one more time before I decide if I'm gonna frog this or not. And I couldn't find her second page. She, had a, she has this in two parts on her blog and I couldn't find the second part. So I went over to Ravelry thinking, okay, I know I found it in there originally. Well, lo and behold, I found another blogger and crafter crocheter person. Um, she has a web blog called Jam Made, J-A-M-M-A-D-E, like J-A-M, Jam, M-A-D-E, Made. And she, she kind of um, wrote a pattern to help you make the same type of cat because the cat is so, so cute. Um, and, and so now I feel a lot better. I, I'm, I went ahead and or, had already by this time made these, like I said, trying to just, you know, winging it myself for the most part with her basic idea of make a square, then, you know, then add, basically you're making triangles here. So this is just, um, all you're doing is decreasing as you go up. But then in the pattern one that Jam Maid's done actually has, you know, like for the eye, she tells you how many stitches and for the arms and legs and everything. So I am at this point moved over and trying to follow the Jam Maid uh, pattern to try to fit it up with this. So ho hopefully I'm not spinning my wheels here and this will turn out to be cute. I don't know. I will say it's nice because I have, um, since I've been making these hats and everything, um, I have a lot of little, you know, little extra balls here. This is in my <laughs> my unique makeup bag. But I have all these extra balls of different colored, you know, bright colored yarn that kind of go together. So that was my idea, of, and that's why I'm calling him Scrap Cat, because I'm just trying to use up these scraps um, and everything. So, yeah, so that's, that's in the works. So he, he almost became... He almost became frogged, but he did not. Um, my other whip, which I don't, yeah, I don't have it here either. I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm trying to rush. This is not good. But you've seen it already. I actually sh shown it and talked about it for a couple of weeks. And it's the Baby Kimono. It's a Lion Brand uh, Baby Kimono and is, is the, uh, the Lion Brand pattern. And this is the yarn I've been using. I happen to at least have some of the yarn with me. Um, the actual piece that I've been working on is, I'm not sure where it is. Hopefully it's on my dining room table probably. But this is where Epic Frogging comes in because I had the first part of this, and it's a free pattern, so don't freak out. I'm going to tell you what's going on with it. The first part of it, you, you knit um, a square that's at least 
I think it starts from 10, it's like 10 inches on up to 11 and a half. And if you know already, I've, I, I started it on straight needles and then decided, okay, I really should probably do this on circular because the, the straight needles were really long and kind of in the way. Um, I also had at this point realized I probably want to make it bigger. Um, this is for my grandniece that I'm making this for because I am such a slow knitter that by the time I finish this thing, this little girl's going to be, you know, in college. <laughs> so I frogged it, started with the circular needles, realized, yes, the circular needles do make it easier just because I, it makes it much more portable. And um, so then I restarted it, went for the bigger square, so decided to make the 18 month, which is 11 inches. I'm jamming on it, I'm bringing it to meetings, I'm knitting away, bing to bang, I'm such a cool chick. Well, I had one boo-boo spot where I don't, I have no idea what I was doing, but somehow I had a couple of pearls and it was on the edge. And I thought, well, I'm not going to frog it because it's on the edge and it was like maybe four or five stitches and it's going to be seamed. It won't even be noticeable. Okay. So I keep going. Jing, jing, jing. I'm so cool. I am knitting, knitting, knitting. <laughs> And then, I don't know, I picked it up at some point and somehow things got switched around and I was purling when I was supposed to be knitting. And that happened for like two rows and I was like, oh man, that's super, super obvious girl. So, and this is for a gift. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I know my niece is not going to be like, oh, my aunt has a boo-boo here. She doesn't, she's a sweetie. She's not going to give me a hard time about that. But I want it to be halfway decent. You know, I don't want to have two rows of stray purling in the middle of something. So I frogged it. Yeah, not the whole thing, but I was, I think I had nine out of 11 inches. So I had like two inches to go and I frogged it down to probably, um, maybe five inches. Okay. Because I had, I had to frog down to the, to the boo-boo and then I had to get the needle back through and I'm not very good at that. So I really, I ended up having to take um, and almost do like one stitch of a, at a time. And then I had a, a size F crochet hook that I pulled the stitches and got them back on the needle. Whew. I don't even know. It probably was faster for me to just to redo the whole thing, but it, it, it wouldn't have been, you know, I mean, I, I still saved, like I said, at least five, possibly six inches um, of, of the square that I was making. So yeah, that's a bummer. So I, um, I mean, I lost a lot of time. I, you know, some of this for process, I do enjoy the process of knitting and crocheting and crafting. I mean, I'm, I'm cool with that. Um, but it, you know, because this is, this is for somebody and I kind of have a timeline because babies grow very fast and I, you know, this isn't something that I can say, Oh, I'll just, you know, make it whenever it gets done, it gets done. If I do that, like I said, little, little crystal jewel is going to be in college and maybe this would be for her baby. <laughs> but I, I don't want that to be, I'll be like a really old lady then. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, that's the epic frogging. I almost had to frog. I almost frogged the cats, the, the scrap cat. And then I did frog a bunch of the baby kimono. <laughs> Uh, boohoo and let's see so what else oh and one other thing I'm working on and that where did I put that at oh it was over here oh, la, la. Um, because I this is part of the um, the craft along which of course you know I'm trying to participate but obviously I mean I, I mean I am participating but you know obviously I will not be gifting myself you know a five dollar pattern if I win I'm not gonna win um, but I was looking through my seed beads and I found, I actually found a lot of cabochons that I, uh, had set on what's called stiff stuff. And I found this, which is practically finished in a way. Can you see that? This is a glass cabochon, but it's got a face on it. And this was made by my friend Dee Dee Hess, who's a glass work artist. And I glue, what you do is you glue the, because one side of this is flat. I call it a cab because one side's flat. Um, I glued it onto the stiff stuff and then I did this bead embroidery around it and I've got her, I've got her with hair 
and everything. And I remember, I think I stopped this because I was kind of like, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. But now when I found it, I knew re right away, I was like, I'm going to finish that. Luckily, I have um, the beads were, were in with my little, I have them all together. I mean, that's amazing that I did that. Um, and these little seed beads, these are size 11 uh, glass seed beads. And I got them originally from, I think, let me see. Yeah, Bead Shop. Beadshop.com. She has all kinds of wonderful. And, and I can't, this is so old, she may not have these beads anymore. So don't, don't think, oh, I'm going to go over there and get those beads. Because it, it's a good chance. These are translucent grape. A B meaning aurora or borealis. So they have a little bit of a, a little bit of a sheen to them. Um, so I'm going to finish these, and I happen to have, if I can find it, some purple anodized, yeah, um, aluminum um, chain. But it's a bright purple chain. So what I'm going to do is this is just that little little bit that I have to finish up. Then. I have to finish the back, which, which basically what you do is you cover the back with something like ultra suede or leather or suede or something like that and, and trim it so that it's because it looks icky in the back. So you cover that and then I'll make a bale and I'll make this into a pendant and I'll put it on some of that chain and I think it'll look perfect together. I mean, it's pretty out there. It's not something I would, uh, I will say that I tend to wear very conservative jewelry for the most part. Um, I'm wearing some, these are a little crazy because I'm, I, this is, for me, this is, this is crazy jewelry here, <laughs> which I made these two. These are just, you know, very simple fringe earrings, but, um, but anyway, this is probably a little bit out there, but I think if I can, you know, make it into a pendant, tone it down a little bit, uh, with the chain and just, you know, the chain will kind of simplify it, even though it's a bright purple chain, I think it'll look really cool. And I love purple. Purple's like one of my favorite colors, so. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's another thing that I hope to finish. I even I still even have the needle attached. Look at this, like just ready to go, waiting for me. So, um, and this is just a very abstract pattern. It has there's no rhyme or reason to it. And this the thread is silamide. I I prefer silamide normally when I use. Um, it's just because I'm used to it. I'm not saying it's better or worse than anything else. Um, oh, I hear my dogs getting worked up. <laughs> All right, so I, I probably need to wrap this up anyway. It's kind of getting there. All right, so that's what I'm working on. That's what I've made. Lots of good stuff. Um, please make sure that you stop by and join our Ravelry group and come on with the craft along. We want to craft with each other. I mean, there's no pressure about having to finish anything. You know, just come in and dibble dabble, you know, post some ideas, a picture or two. You don't have to finish that project. There's no deadline. The only deadline is that you have to do something in our craft along. You know, you have to post something over there, and you have to be, you know, a member um, in order to participate and then be entered to win, you know, a giftable pattern. So, hey, what's you know, what's to lose? And plus, it might, you know, you never know. It might get you in a direction like now that I've been picking up the seed beads, I've um, kind of enjoyed that type of jewelry making that I haven't done in quite a while. Even when I was doing stuff like for when I used to write for about.com, I used to do their jewelry making site. I, I did that for like 15 years. I did not do a ton of seed bead stuff because they had a beadwork site and I kind of felt like I would be competing, you know, for that audience. I don't know. I mean, I try to do something different. Uh, I, I mean, there is, if you go over there, there's still a lot of beadwork related projects that I've done on my old site. The site is still up. Um, jewelrymaking.about.com so that's still up and they have a new guide who is doing whatever she's doing um, but my stuff is still up there so uh, which I'm cool with um, you know I get like a penny on the dollar or whatever but hey go over there and click on it send me some pennies but yeah so that's it that's what I'm working on um, make sure you stop over at tammypally.com if you want to pick up show notes and I will probably add another little uh, photo montage at the end here because I like those and I, in fact what I may do once I get here from all the winners I might put a brief photo montage together of the prizes uh, that I send to them so you guys can see them I, I don't want to wait two weeks until I do another podcast obviously because I want them to get their prizes as soon as possible but I'm kind of in the I'm kind of in the in-between stage where I'm waiting to hear from everybody and then I have to you know pick the prizes and send them out so um, but it's not going to take me two weeks to do all that. 
but I would like you to see what they're going to get. And yeah, so make sure you subscribe to me over on my YouTube channel. Stop by and check out the show notes. And I hope you guys have a wonderful couple weeks. If I don't see you before then, uh, craft happy. <laughs>